the things that I've started to see in some of the research that I'm doing is if you go and you ask people, what are some examples of informal things that exist today that didn't go away? And they'll tell you, well, the way that we tell people there's going to be a funeral, we don't pick up the phone and call everyone that we know. It happens a very specific, systematic way through our communities. It's a one-way communication. Um, I'm responsible for telling certain people. They're responsible for telling certain people. This really elaborate network of letting people know what's happened um, still exists today, uh, at least in my community. It could be different in other First Nations, uh, Native American communities. Um, if there's going to be a ceremony, if there's going to be an important discussion, we had a crier in our community that would go out and it was his job to let everybody know. Um, if there were specific people that were supposed to go, uh, you would tell them in a one direction line of uh, communication. I need to tell you that there's going to be something that's happening and it's been requested that you come and participate in, the in, in this conversation. You wouldn't tell me no or say maybe. I don't have any responsibility to go back and tell that person. My job was, my traditional job was to let you know this is happening. And hopefully, um, maybe, maybe you know that you don't want to be a part of that discussion. You disagree. Maybe you leave and you go do something else. That was also another very traditional thing when it came to voting or decision making. It was generally considered poor taste. And if you read a lot of the early ethnographic accounts, if I don't agree what this chief is doing, I'm just going to pack up and I'm going to go. I'm going to vote with my feet. I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm going to set up my own camp. Uh, I'm going to just head out and do that. I'm not going to every day um, moan and complain and argue with what you're doing and cut you down publicly and try and, like, we're coming up on an election, so I know anybody that watches television these days <laughs> is looking at whether we want to or not. Who said what about proposition, whatever, or house resolution, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. That was considered poor taste. It was considered childish. And usually you could, in some cases, you could be removed from your family by the whip, removed from your community by the whip man for doing that. Considered counterproductive. Considered how kids would react, not necessarily how adults should carry themselves. So we tend to see these traditional structures that do move on. And, and our next generation comes in, and uh, this generation... We see maybe a little bit less friction. Uh, we see people that are getting good at doing things like establishing some patterns. In the States, we had a, a series of policies um, starting uh, after termination where people started to realize that this wholesale crushing of traditional values based on these new things, it's not working. We can't just enfranchise people. We can't take away their status and give them $1,000 and send them somewhere and a ticket to a trade school and expect for them to flourish. Um, other people came from around the world to do that, but there's something different here with these people. They have some relationship that is fundamentally a part of who they are and what they believe, and that's not going away. We just can't cut those ties as easily as we want to with these different laws. Um, some people during this time are continuing to work away to find some nice mix to bring back some forms of um, uh, more of a consensus style decision making. Maybe it's more decision making with more input. There are some people that are still really vested in making some differences. We see some new programs. We see new jurisdictions over um, some of our own tribal court systems, uh, tribal police, uh, different tribal education ventures. Uh, band operated tribal schools. We start to see we are doing some things that maybe do take some of these into consideration. We are seeing some kind of a, uh, uh, we are seeing some successes here in some of these areas. And then the next generation comes along and now we're seeing a little bit more of some of those original things we associated with our nice uh, inertia in the beginning. And now we're starting to see that not only are we finding some successes, we're beginning to identify some things based on these traditional values, these traditional ideas, these traditional structures. We're starting to see that they're more accurate in uh, bringing about some positive changes. We start to see some really great uh, scholarly work out of uh, the um, uh, Harvard Project on American Indian Economic Development where they're identifying specific things that work and specific things that don't work. We tend to find 
uh, more Native people going into higher education, becoming teachers, working with children, and realizing, wow, we learn our language a very different way. And it's more effective to look at how we do this. And we can then create some new curriculum that's based on these things. It's not based off of some new um, program for kids in high school to learn Spanish, but if we actually take some of these values and we build them back into the basic fundamental stages of learning language, uh, uh, primarily when kids are under six years old through Head Start programs or day, um, daycare programs or primary schools, we're starting to see a lot of things pay back. So now we're getting people that are starting to realize there are some successful ways of doing this. So what happens is uh, during this time period, we tend to refer to this sometimes as uh, self-determination or uh, self-governance. And we're finding uh, more control over uh, certain areas of our uh, lives. Sometimes uh, they work out really great. And, uh, like corporations is what you're talking about, like within the tribes? Um, at this point there were a series of acts in the U.S. that had to do with expanding uh, tribes' um, powers over their governance structures, how they dealt with the outside world. Um, and then we start moving into what uh, this newer generation, what we tend to sometimes find called nation, nation building, or uh, sometimes we call it nation rebuilding. And at this point, um, it's getting pretty hard to argue with the ideas that other people and other processes and other systems are much better at doing what we've always told people we were pretty good at doing. Um, now we tend to find uh, more of our systems, more of our um, uh, different processes for getting things done, things like education, um, things like healthcare. We are now finding that we're having much more success if we have some measure of input over those things. And in fact, um, uh, if the, the greater, uh, uh, the greater, the, the more we design these ideas, uh, the more we design them to address some of our own needs for them to be community driven and to answer to the community, uh, which means we're no longer just basing our successes off of what Washington State says or the United States federal government or the province of British Columbia. As long as we're setting our own indicators of success, as long as we are um, able to um, analyze and, and um, do uh, a policy analysis and redesign of our program, we're starting to find that there are a lot more successes. So we now find that there are people that want to go back and look at some of these. We want to take some of these ideas and we want to move into some new direction. Now, it's not possible to ever go back in time and get back on this exact same trajectory, but what we can do, if we can incorporate these, hopefully we can exert a force that at least when it comes time to some of these key systems, these established traditional structures, at least we can move back in that same, uh, with that same inertia that we were using before into that same direction. We know that we're not going to go back in time. I'm not going to ride a horse to work. I guarantee you right now I'm not yeah. going to. You give me the greatest horse in the world, <laughs> and I'll beat in saddle and all, all the reins and all that, and I will still drive my car. Um, I don't want to work for dried fish. I, no matter how much I love dried fish or don't love it, it is not a good unit of measurement of uh, wealth. Yeah. So I would prefer to work for real money, and um, I prefer to have some things the way they are. We know we're not going back in time. Um, I, would, I would tend to maybe want to look at this as maybe the best of both worlds. Uh, we're going to use some of the things that are working all around the world. Obviously, if we want to have our own businesses and uh, we want them to be successful, sure. we're not going to deal just with our own community. We are not going to start a restaurant or a sandwich cart. We're not going to grow our own grain. 
and then ground that grain and turn it into uh, flour and then no, make I our own bread and raise our own turkeys and find you know wild turkeys or whatever we're going to want to be able to interact with the global economy that outside world just like anyone else does competitively